Welcome to Europe ECR 2021. My name is Didi Echeche, and it's a true pleasure to drive you through the high life at Transeptal Mitral Valve Replacement Study. And we will focus on the study updates. So what are the steps of the uh, procedure? It's a very simple three steps procedure. The first one being the loop uh, placement. It's easily achieved through the guidance, uh, the imaging guidance, whether it be echo and CT guidance and fluoro uh, during the procedure. The second step is the ring delivery. And the third one being the transeptal delivery of a bioprosthesis through the transeptal access. So three steps for that procedure. If you're gonna wanna get more details, there will be a step-by-step -step de description by Wolfgang Rothbauer, or you can go directly to the website. So in terms of uh, a study, what are the key uh, elements of the feasibility study? So briefly, the iLife Transeptal uh, Mitral Valve Replacement Feasibility Study is a combination of two studies. One study is ongoing in Europe and uh, Australia, uh, aiming at uh, including 50 patients across 40 sites. And the other study is an early feasibility study running in the US, aiming at including 15 patients at eight sites. So far, as you can see, 163 patients have been screened and uh, 21 patients have been uh, successfully uh, treated. So we're seeing that the uh, screening rate is really uh, increasing based on the experience of the centers. And we expect to get more and more patients in the upcoming months. So what are the baseline characteristics of the study population? You can immediately appreciate on this slide that this was a high risk population. The first 20 patients that were uh, analyzed and whose data are available today are high risk patients with a mean age of 77 years, a uh, high risk profile with a mean ST score of 6.3. And you can see that these patients were highly symptomatic with the vast majority being in NYHA class three or, or four at the time of inclusion. In terms of regurgitation, uh, severe regurgitation, three plus or four plus for all the patients, and 75% uh, of these patients had a functional mitral regurgitation. So this was clearly a high risk population. And this is uh, highlighted by the number of comorbidities that are listed on the right part of this slide. If we go more into details about the procedural outcomes, if we relate the high risk profile to what we uh, see on this slide, only two deaths, and so this is a quite this was a quite uh, safe procedure. And one patient required conversion to, uh, to surgery. Only one patient uh, required a pacemaker. And in terms of bleeding, only three patients uh, had a major uh, bleeding. So a quite an overall safe procedure in regards to the high risk profile of the study population. If we uh, focus on the right part of the, the slide, we can see that at baseline, as, as we said before. The amount, the amount of regurgitation was uh, really important, three plus or four plus at baseline, yellow and orange and red. And you can see during the follow-up, whether it be discharged to 30 days or even one year, the vast majority of the patient had none or trace or mild regurgitation. So if we want to summarize, safe procedure, despite the iris profile of the steady population, and efficient procedure with a significant reduction in the mitral regurgitation uh, degree uh, during the follow-up. But there is still room for, for improvement. And uh, as we all know, uh, one of the, the major exclusion criteria for these uh, trans uh, catheter mitral valve replacement devices is the risk of uh, LVOT obstruction. And uh, in fact, almost 40% of the study of the patients that have been screened were excluded due to that risk of LVOT obstruction. But improvement is coming. There is still room for improvement. And we uh, can see that uh, the next generation, the next iteration of the device is, has been reshaped, particularly the cuff or uh, the fabric uh, to provide uh, less fabric all around the stand frame and to make sure that the flow is going to be uh, directed towards the LVOT and to minimize the risk of LVOT obstruction. So that high life clarity valve is going to be studied in a dedicated study, the high flow study clarity with the clarity valve, aiming at including 50 patient, 15 patients at uh, 15 sites in up to 50 sites. So uh, I hope that you, you got more understanding about the technology, the steps of the procedure, the clinical performance of the device, even if it's uh, within a limited uh, population, but the number of cases is growing. And what is the next iteration? What is going to uh, provide in terms of safety uh, for the patient 
aiming at being able to treat more patients. So I wish you a very nice Europe EPCR 2021. Stay tuned and I wish, I hope that I'm going to see you face-to-face -face one day.